Hi kids, welcome to lesson four of My Purpose Will Stand. And the lesson is about God has the right, the power, and the wisdom to govern the world. Hi kids, it's Mr. Lemke again. And I just want to remind you of that, of course, we have weekly video lessons on YouTube and we have small group Zoom meetings on Sundays. There's a link on this page, this slide, uh, that uh, you can use to find out more information. Okay, so let's start with the verse, and then we'll have a quick word of prayer, and then we'll get into our lesson. So in Colossians 1, verses 16 and 17, it says, For by him all things were created, in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or rulers or authorities. All things were created through him and for him, and he is before all things, and in him all things hold together. Dear Lord, we thank you that we can look at your word again, and we pray that as we go through that you'll open our eyes to how you are the one who has the power and the authority and the ability, and uh, we just pray this in your name. Amen. All right. So the providence of God, we've uh, looked at this the last few weeks, and just as a reminder, the providence or the provide, there's the word provide in there, the providence of God. So it means God is present and active in all his creation, his eyes watching, his hand is working to uphold all creation, so to hold it together. We're going to learn uh, a little bit more about the providence of God today, as we will see. So God governs the universe, and we're better uh, to understand this than to look into God's word. So in Psalm 103, verses 19 to 22, it says, The Lord has established his throne in the heavens, and his kingdom rules over all. Bless the Lord, O you his angels, you mighty ones who do his word, obeying the voice of his word. Bless the Lord, all his hosts, all his ministers who do his will. Bless the Lord, all his works in all places of his dominion. Bless the Lord. Oh, my soul. So we see the providence of God. God is present and active in all his creation. His eye is watching. His hand is working to uphold and to govern all creation. So what does govern mean? Well, let's have a look. So if we look in the book of Job, which is in the Old Testament, and also in Daniel, we get a bit of an idea. So as it says, God commands the morning, telling the sun when to rise. God tells the seas where to stop and halts the waves at his determined place. He tells the rain to fall in the desert, spreading grass. He calls to the clouds and he creates a flood. And at God's command, the eagle soars high and builds a nest. He scatters the lightning and commands it to strike his mark. He commands the seasons, ushering in frosty winters, followed by spring flowers. As I'm recording this, uh, it's a sunny day outside, but tomorrow is the first day of fall. And uh, I'm a little bit sad about that, but I do like the fall. But it means, yeah, the snow's coming, but God promises <laughs> we'll have spring flowers after. So should God rule? Can God rule? Uh, again, with the fall, I mean, we see... Uh, these awesome pictures of leaves uh, turning color and so on. I like this one. This was from um, a number of years ago, and it just reminds me of, uh, in some ways, a golden crown. Um, a golden crown placed on someone's head, and it's a mighty crown, a crown fit for a king. So, so in that vein, should God rule? And can God rule? Should God be the one to wear this crown uh, and... Uh, can he rule? Well, what does rule mean? Uh, this is uh, from a few years ago, actually quite a few years ago. My daughter, uh, she was getting her driver's license and um, I own the car and I gave her my permission, uh, seeing as I was the owner of the car, the one who could set the rules. Uh, so I gave her permission to use my car for her driving test and she passed and she didn't crash and we actually still have the car today. Well, you're so last year, my daughter, uh, she uh, started work as a nurse and she was able to save up money and buy a nice new car for herself. And she was very happy about that. And uh, what that means is 
she is now the one who can set the rules, who can decide who can drive her car if a car is going to be borrowed um, and how it's to be driven. So I have to ask permission of her now if I would like to borrow her car. So as it says, if you own something, you can rule or govern its use. So God is the creator and the owner and the sustainer of the universe. So he is the governor of the universe. He has the right to rule it. Okay, so we read in Romans 9, 20, verse 21, it says, but who are you, O man, to answer back to God? Will what is molded say to its molder, why have you made me like this? So will we as people say to God, why have you made us like this? And we want to be like, such and such or so and so a person instead well that's not likely to happen that God is going to change his purpose uh, just because we want him to and we can see in verse 21 that the potter has no right has the potter no right over the clay to make out of the same lump one vessel for honorable use and another for dishonorable use in the same way as the bricks that were used to make the Great Wall of China, would they have said to the, the soldiers and others who were using them to make the wall, uh, no, don't place us here. Uh, we want to actually be in one of the streets um, back in the capital city, and um, that's what you should do with us. Well, we can't imagine that happening. That's ridiculous. And in the same way, for us to tell God that we want him to change his purpose for us or for others, uh, is silly as well. So we have no right to question God's rule because we're the created ones. We are not the creator. In 1 Chronicles 29, it says, Yours, O Lord, is the greatness and the power and the glory and the victory and the majesty for all that is in the heavens and in the earth is yours. Yours is the kingdom, O Lord, and you are exalted as head above all. Both riches and honor come from you, and you rule over all. In your hand are power and might, and in your hand it is to make great and to give strength to all. And now we thank you, our God, and praise your glorious name. So God's ability to rule a universe is based on the fact that God alone has the right and the power and the wisdom to be able to do so. In Jeremiah 10, verse 12, it says, It is he who made the earth by his power, who established the world by his wisdom, and by his understanding stretched out the heavens. So again, it is God who has the right, the power, the wisdom, the authority to rule, to govern, um, and not us. Okay, so that's our lesson for today. So let's just uh, close in prayer. Lord, we do thank you uh, that you are the powerful one, that you, because you have created everything, including us, your purposes are true and you have uh, the right and the authority to rule and to govern over everything that you have purposed. We thank you for that. We thank you that we could have a look at your word. In Jesus' name, amen.
will celebrate the light. And when I stumble in the darkness, I will call your name by night. God of wonders beyond our galaxy, you are Oh